in a year that can be best described as a dumpster fire, Doom Eternal was the clothespin that helped us get through the stink. Originally released back in March, Doom Eternal let gamers delight in Demon Carnage on the PC, PS4, Xbox, and uh, Stadia, while Nintendo Switch owners would unfortunately have to wait to experience the Slayer's newest massacre. And wait they did, as the months oozed by with little word on the port's status. <laughs> But now they can rejoice, as Doom Eternal has finally stomped onto everyone's favorite hybrid, and Switch shooter fans can finally see how much fun the Marauders are. What's up everybody, I'm Kirk, and today I'll be taking a look at Doom Eternal for the Nintendo Switch, to see if it's a big hell yes or a big hell no. But before all that, please be sure to subscribe to this channel for more videos on ports that make PC players cringe. Alright, let's get ripping, let's get tearing. I originally reviewed Doom Eternal earlier this year around the time it came out, so I'm only going to briefly summarize my thoughts on the game. If you want my full reactions, I have the original review linked at the top, in the description, and I'll throw up a clicky box at the end of the video. Developed by id Software and published by Bethesda, Doom Eternal takes place during a demonic invasion of Earth. You once again play as the happy-go-lucky Doom Slayer, as he wages a one-man war against the armies of Hell. Eternal doubles down on Doom 2016's focus on non-stop, pure offensive play, encouraged by the flashy glory kill system. Additions to the formula include a dash mechanic which works so well it's hard to imagine Doom not having it, the flame belch, which lights demons on fire, making them spew out armor shards, a shoulder-mounted grenade launcher in the boom and chill varieties, and the Blood Punch, which splatters or staggers baddies in the range of its shockwave. Variety is key in Eternal. If players are able to utilize all of these mechanics in harmony, they'll become a self-sufficient powerhouse of death, making for an incredibly visceral combat experience. Platforming is a big emphasis this time around, something that I don't think adds a ton to the experience, but is well executed. There's also the Fortress, a new hub area where players can unlock upgrades and weapon mods along with alternate skins. The 2v1 multiplayer battle mode was also introduced, where two players take control of demons and fight against a lone slayer. A fun mode that I don't think was the deathmatch replacement it was hoping for. Eternal was also notable for its difficulty, featuring some of the most brutal and unforgiving gameplay the franchise has ever seen, with many focusing their anguish on the new Marauder enemy, who, while overwhelming at first, can be dismantled quickly with the right weapon combo. I absolutely love this game. I consider it one of the best games of 2020, and in my opinion, I think it's one of the greatest first-person shooters ever made, taking the fundamentals of what made the genre so much fun in the first place and injecting them with steroids. It's not everybody's cup of whiskey-spiked tea, but id Software knew exactly what their audience wanted, and with laser focus created one of the most insane shooter experiences the world has ever seen. And now that experience can be played in the palms of your hands. The Switch version of Eternal was developed by Panic Button, a studio that has made a name for itself developing high-quality ports for Nintendo's hybrid, and I'm happy to say their work on Eternal maintains their glowing reputation. Doom Eternal remains intact on the Switch. Everything featured in the other versions is here. All the missions, all the monsters, all the secrets, all the unlockables, even battle mode. The exception being the recently released Ancient Gods DLC, but I'm gonna take a wild guess and say that's on its way. Of course, because of the Switch's limited hardware, the game has seen a visual downgrade Downgrade, but it's not as severe as I expected. Playing docked, Eternal runs at a dynamic 720p resolution, and in handheld the resolution is slightly lower. It's a fuzzier image all around, but not so much that it gets in the way of gameplay. Load times are also pretty decent, not quite as quick as the other versions, but not long enough to be annoying. As far as I could tell, virtually all of the textures and models have been simplified to some degree, and there's definitely some assets that are looking a little rough. However, there's a clear effort to retain a lot of the smaller details, which I appreciate, and I was also pleased to see that a lot of the lighting in the environments has remained comparable to the other versions. All of that aside, what's important is that each mission still looks and feels as it should. Erdak is still hauntingly beautiful, and Necrovol is still horrifying. And look at the scene with the Super Gore Nest. No, it's not as spectacular in the Switch version, but the scene still retains its fleshy explosiveness. Weapon models have definitely been toned down, with lower detailed textures and simplified reflections. Even still, they look as they should, and I did not mind staring at these weapons again for hours on end. 
glory kills have definitely gone through an adjustment. They overall still look good and are still as gory as ever, but compared to the other versions, there is a noticeable loss in detail, and the real-time gore effects took a huge hit in quality, looking especially low resolution. A lot of detailed particle effects have either been toned down or are missing entirely, and depth of field effects, as seen when the player uses the weapon wheel, are also absent. All in all though, I think Panic Button did a great job translating Doom Eternal's visuals to the Switch, and I think it's safe to say that this is easily one of the best looking games on the system. At this point, I'm sure some of you are going, okay Kirk, we got it, but what about the frame rate? Now, Doom Eternal on the PS4 and Xbox runs at a mostly locked 60 frames per second, and on PC, depending on the rig, can see frames much higher than that. On Switch though, Eternal targets 30 frames per second, which is in line with the Doom 2016 port. Obviously, for this reason, it's not as smooth as the other versions. However, I am overjoyed to say that it is a stable 30 frames per second, which is not always the case with these AAA Switch ports. Every Every inch of gameplay from the exploration to the epic battles performed consistently, with slight drops whenever things got a little too hectic, and even then it wasn't enough to hamper gameplay. For a shooter of this caliber running on the Switch, it's pretty phenomenal. Running in handheld, the performance feels slightly better despite the fuzzier image. In fact, I played a good chunk of Eternal in handheld with motion aiming turned on and had an absolute blast. I know there's plenty of Switch shooter fans who swear by playing this way, and I think they're going to be pleased with its implementation. For me, it made the the game feel fresh, and there was something kind of awesome about annihilating demons while glory killing my toilet. Battle mode performance was also on par with the single player campaign, and I did not experience any connection issues. The only times I saw really severe frame dips was during the game's cinematics, which appeared to be dropping into the low 20s. That's unfortunate, but I'd rather have that be the case than see a severe frame dip in the middle of fighting an arachnotron. While we're talking about the cutscenes, on the Switch, all of the cutscenes now have a letterbox, which I assume was done to help the performance as there would be less for the Switch to render. This is a clever trick, but in some scenes the HUD would fail to switch off, which looked pretty awkward. Now I've been pretty complimentary so far, but I did have some issues. Pop-in is pretty common throughout, not necessarily unexpected for a port like this, but it's still not great to see. There's also graphical artifacts and glitches throughout. For example, the reflections on the Slayer's helmet during cutscenes are totally bugged. And even worse, there's glaring black pixelation that crops up whenever you find a rune. I also experienced several crashes, which would have been worse if the game's autosave wasn't so on point. There was also a bizarre bug where the game became totally unresponsive. Responsive. No, my controller didn't die, the game just stopped working. I guess it was this zombie's lucky day. To be fair though, this was the only time this happened to me, but it's still something to watch out for. And hopefully some of these other minor issues will receive some patches in the future. Is this the best way to experience Doom Eternal? No, but if your sole gaming device is the Switch and you love first-person shooters, then this is a no-brainer. This is still Doom Eternal in all of its brutal glory. The fine people at Panic Button pulled it off and deserve a tasty drink and some time to catch up on all the sleep they might have lost getting this port out. Rejoice, everybody, because now we can rip and tear anywhere. Be sure to let me know your thoughts on Doom Eternal in the comments. Is anybody currently playing this version? What are your thoughts on it? I'd like to hear from you. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to subscribe like, and share with your fellow Slayers. It is a massive help for this channel. And as promised, here is a clicky box for my original review for Doom Eternal. The next screen will have one for the Ancient Gods if you want to know my thoughts on that. I post videos weekly, so be sure to ring that bell so you're the first to see them. I'm Kirk, and thank you for watching this video. Stay safe out there.